What's up guys and welcome back to the eSports Club. My name is Captain Arya and today we're going to take a look at the pros and cons of the new gaming phone, the iQ3. Now you might have seen our unboxing and first impressions video a few days back where we had our first look at the phone. Now we've spent some time with it and we have some sort of an idea of what the phone offers. So we're going to tell you the good and the bad so you can make up your mind and tell us in the comments what you think of it as well. Let's start with some of the good things that the phone does really well. iQ3 is an extremely fast and powerful phone. Not only do you have 8GB of LPDDR5 RAM. You've also got the most powerful processor on the market right now, the Snapdragon 865. And that's backed up by really fast setup times. So I set up about 180 apps straight from my Google backup uh, and installed a lot of games, their extra files, all of that took only, uh, you know, half an hour to 40 minutes, which is extremely impressive. And game boot times are super fast. You're not gonna be waiting too long to get into games. First launch uh, might take a little bit of time, but after that, nothing more than a few seconds and then the time it takes to get onto the server. So overall, very impressive speed there. Next thing is it's got an extremely impressive battery life and charger. It's got a 4400 mAh battery so it doesn't run out quite as fast and even on gaming it's optimized so well that it doesn't drain your battery. You know about one match of Call of Duty Mobile will take maybe three to four percent at best while running on the gaming mode, the ultra gaming mode where everything is optimized to give you the best gaming performance. And even if it does run out of juice, that amazing 55 watt charger is gonna have you back up to 50% in about 20-ish minutes. The 15 minute claim isn't as accurate, depends on a lot of things, but we've experienced about 20 minutes and you're good to go with at least 50% battery. All right, next up, of course, the biggest highlight of the gaming phone is the monster touch buttons. Now, it's not the first one to do this. We've had the ROG phone come out with that as well, but they work extremely well. You just have to get used to uh, their positioning, you know, since most gamers are anyways playing with a sort of a claw grip. Uh, so moving your fingers up here isn't too much of a shift. If you're expecting a direct shift from console controllers to figuring this out, that will take you a while. You gotta know which part of your finger to press from, where to apply the pressure. Uh, the case also is extremely great here. It actually comes with built-in buttons. This is the case that comes out of the box with the iQ3. So it is good to go if you wanna use the gaming buttons. If you're looking at third-party cases, you're gonna have to make sure they support slots for these buttons as well. Now, the last thing about this phone I'm extremely impressed with is the quality of the screen. It is large enough, a 6.4 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED, supports HDR10 Plus, and you know, everything looks great on it, be it games, be it media. Uh, you know, it goes up to 800 nits in brightness, so it is perfect for enjoying your games uh, in crystal clear quality and watching some Netflix. Now we've talked about the good of the phone. This is not a perfect phone, unfortunately. It does have some glaring shortcomings, uh, which will certainly weigh in whether, when you're deciding whether or not you want to pick up the iQ3. Let's start with the biggest problem, even though it's a great quality screen, the refresh rate doesn't quite live up. It is only a 60 hertz refresh rate screen, while others, um, you know, other phones in the same price bracket that it's competing with have given you 90 hertz or higher options. I'm talking about the OnePlus and the ROG phone, both priced similarly. This one, the iQ3 goes from 37 to up to 45,000. You're gonna find both OnePlus and ROG phones in that price bracket. If they are in stock, they will be giving you, uh, you know, similar level performance. The OnePlus doesn't have the air buttons, but it's got a better refresh rate screen. So, you know, it's got that going for it. Next up, the cases. As I mentioned earlier uh, on the unboxing, while the phone looks gorgeous, it is a fingerprint magnet. I cleaned it and I've been holding it just a couple of minutes in this video, and you can see it already looks disgusting. Now, the case that comes out of the box, it's a sort of a frosted case. It does support 
uh, access to your monster touch buttons for gaming third party cases you're gonna have to check if it supports them and even if they're there how well they work so that's going to be a bit of an issue moving forward because I'm not comfortable using phones without their cases and I don't want something that's too bulky and then at the same time I don't want to pick up a case which is going to make one of the biggest USBs of this phone useless. Now moving on one of the most important parts of any smartphone is the UI. Now OnePlus has done a phenomenal job with their OS it is as close to stock Android as can be while adding customizations and optimizations IQ on the other hand bogs you down with their annoying IQ UI it's not bad it's just difficult to get into and it's not too easy to navigate and figure out things uh, a lot of your standard apps are replaced by proprietary apps uh, you know your Google contacts are not there by default you have to download the Google contacts app they're using their own contacts app uh, you know the dialer app is not too friendly uh, in terms of showing you favorites and stuff like that so a lot of quality of life issues there which might factor into you not going with the iq3 now last but not least as we saw in the unboxing the iq has actually done uh, a good job they provide you with 3.5 mm jack speakers with a 90 degree angle jack so that it sits comfortably when you plug it in while gaming that is mainly because they've actually got extremely poor speakers now most phones in this price bracket that we've seen coming out actually ship with dual speakers one uh, below and then one above this unfortunately has just a single speaker and it's not that great especially if you're holding it in your hand and gaming it is going to sound absolutely terrible it's loud but it's not good so that is the pros and cons of our iQ3 gaming phone. What do you think of this phone? Do you like it? Do you not like it? We'd love to hear your thoughts. On the surface, it is good enough to game, great to watch content on. As you can see, I've been binge watching The Mandalorian quite a bit and enjoyed it thoroughly. My gaming experience on this phone has been great. But as you've seen, it does have its shortcomings with the refresh rate, uh, support for other cases, the UI, which I'm not really a fan of, and the poor speakers. Tell us what you think. In the meantime, do like, share, follow, subscribe, and we'll be back later with more content.